This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com in review. And what I'm looking at today is the third season of Netflix's Love, Death, and Robots. And while I wouldn't quite say it's the threesome I've been looking for, I think this is probably the most satisfying of the three seasons thus far for one reason in particular. It's short. Season three only lasts 13 episodes which means that you aren't being overwhelmed with things. You don't have, let's say, a 10, 13 episode season, which by its very nature means you're gonna get some gems. You're also gonna get some filler because it's 13 episodes and that's really hard to do consistently in terms of quality. With six episodes, it's obviously less, but the odds are much, much better that everything you get is going to be really good. And that is the case with season three. All six episodes are very diverse. They're all CGI, but the animation for each episode is just so different and interesting that it really works. So let's look at episode one, Three Robots, Exit Strategies. Three robots are characters that were introduced in season two. And these robots are awesome. And it's very much a political allegory, which is to say that it's essentially talking about how oligarchs and the accruing of wealth is bad and how it eventually divides society and destroys the human race. It's a great episode. These three robots are awesome. They need their own series. They're just that interesting. Though to think about it, that would probably water them down. So they're just really cool. I love these three guys. And in fact, I'd love to see a three robots episode every season. It's just so cool. And it goes on to imply that Elon Musk is a dick. And hopefully you didn't need this show to tell you that because it's fairly obvious. And it's the Love, Death, and Robots debut of David Fincher as the director. And this is very much in his ballpark, which is to say it's violent, it's very dark, too dark in fact. And I mean in terms of lighting, you can't really see anything very well. It's not bad and you can't see things, but as I said, it's very difficult. And I would have lit it differently. And the story is called Bad Traveling, which takes place on another world where a bunch of whale type creature hunters encounter a particularly ornery crustacean. It's an interesting story. I'm not necessarily sure it's saying all that much, though I should also mention that that's another thing I like about this season in particular. A lot of the stories have subtext and meaning, which isn't necessarily obvious on a first watch, which means you have to watch it again to get more depth. But that's okay, I don't mind that at all. And Bad Traveling is the epitome of that. I think it's saying a lot of stuff about sacrifice, but I'm not at all sure. And this strikes me as very 2001 a Space Odyssey, who evolves around, coincidentally enough, a mission to Io, one of the moons of, I believe, Jupiter or Saturn. And, no, it's Jupiter, I'm pretty sure Io is Jupiter. And they encounter a presence on the moon. The, I should say they being the two astronauts. It's pretty interesting. The animation style is like a cartoon, but it's it's like when you see cartoons, but visually you can tell it's CGI, particularly when they draw machines and mechanical things. It's really interesting, and it's a kind of beautiful story. I don't think any of the episodes in season three reach the heights of Zima Blue from season two, but it's still a nice episode. Pretty good and very thought-provoking. I love this next episode. It's called Night of the Mini Dead, and it's pretty much exactly 
as the title implies, which is to say, zombies overrun the planet, but they're very small. Everything is in fact very small. It's hilarious. There's so many little things happening and it's just fascinating. In fact, there's one scene, and I don't think it's the case, but it looks like the zombies are attacking Kamertaj, which is the home of the sorcerers in Doctor Strange. It's just a fascinating little story. Really cute, really funny, and once again, many zombies. Pay very close attention to little things that are happening. Well, everything is little in the story, but pay attention to some of those little zombies and people going about doing things. Fascinating, great, and very much an allegory for us in our current space in the sense that we aren't as big, as significant, as important as we like to think we are. And this is an awesome episode. Kill Team Kill is very much done in a cartoon style. Not the same cartoon style as the very pulse of the machine, but still a cartoon. Revolving around a team of soldiers encountering a threat. It plays very much like Predator, except it's, <laughs> it's the insanely glorious thing you're probably gonna see in a while. It's great fun, interesting action, and it's just testosterone overload. It is awesome. Kill Team Kill is probably one of the strongest episodes, though there are others as well. Swarm CGI speaking is probably one of the most beautiful and detailed episodes of this season. It revolves around a scientist who's venturing to this alien swarm with the intent of using them, weaponizing them, using them for our own means. But the swarm has their own ideas. Interesting story, somewhat predictable. You knew it was going that way. But as I said, it's gorgeous to look at, it's well done, and it's a triumph. It's nothing you haven't seen before, but it still works particularly well. Now we have Mason's Rats, which is awesome. One of the best episodes from a humor point of view and a gore point of view, though the gore is not human, nonetheless, it's pretty gory, and it revolves around, uh, I would say, a Irish or maybe Scottish farmer and an infestation of rats. It works insanely well. It's hilarious. It's not a cartoon, though it's very much idealized in terms of the design of the characters. It is fascinating. Very watership down. It is just great. And this is all Lovecraft, which is interesting because I'm wondering why it took three seasons for Love, Death, and Robots to get around to it. It revolves around a team of soldiers somewhere, I want to say in a Middle Eastern country, but it's not specified. In any case, they go to this cave and these entities begin picking them off one by one in particularly gory and violent fashion. It is Lovecraft, and I'm pretty sure this creature is Kahuthu. It doesn't identify as that, well, it doesn't identify as anything personally, but it looks very much like something Lovecraft would do. It's very to the point, and that's another thing I should mention. What I love about Love, Death, and Robots is that each episode only has a set amount of time to tell its story. It has to go. There's no time to waste, and it, for the most part, does. It gets to the point, and the ending of this story actually left me a little confused. That I'm not quite understanding it, but that's okay, because, as I mentioned earlier, these episodes take a little more time to digest, and this season is one I will probably view again soon. The final episode of Love, Death, and Robots called Jibaro, and it revolves around conquistadors 
and the hunger and thirst for gold. This episode, like in vaulted halls and tombs, I'm not quite sure I understand. It revolves around this woman who's clearly not a human woman, but some kind of spirit entity. And like a siren, she lures the conquistadors to their doom, but one of them manages to resist for a time until he partakes in the same activities which brought the conquistadors there in the first place, ensuring his due. It's a beautiful story, and as I said, I'm not quite sure I understand it entirely, but the animation is not American. It's done in such a way, to be totally honest with you, I'm not sure what's computer animated in some of it, and what isn't. Like some of the armored suits look very real, as in not CGI, but the way some of the characters look, it looks like CGI. And it's clearly motion capture, because there is no way without motion capture, you'd have characters move like the characters do here. It's beautiful, it's violent, it's graceful. Jabaro is a bit of a paradox. As I said, I really enjoyed it, but also, I'm not quite sure I get it all. Though, that's more than enough reason to watch it again. Love Death and Robot Season 3 is, as I said, the strongest season yet. Now, what do you think? This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com in review. Do you agree, disagree? Let me know down below. And as usual, consider a like or a follow. Peace.